Are you looking to create clickable thumbnails? I know that some of you will say, Trish, I don't have Photoshop and I don't want to buy it. There is free online software that you can use very similar to Photoshop and that is Photo peer now all you have to do is just type it in online and you are in and you can use it so once you are in photoshop you want to first of all set your background you can go ahead and drag that image in now i'm going to go ahead to bring in my subject now i want to take off the background so you want to go under your properties you are looking for quick action so before we remove our background, we need to convert our layers into a smart object. So click on convert layer and say yes. Now you notice that you have the quick action command. Now we want to click on the quick action and click on remove background. So the next thing we're going to do, we want to add a new layer. You want to make sure that layer is in between your subject layer and the background. We want to pick up our brush tool go ahead and increase your brush size and we are going to dab like this a couple of times so we create this glow effect behind our subject now we want to add another layer and this time we want to flip the foreground to white reduce your brush size and we want to create another white glow effect behind our subject we want to go ahead and add a new layer and we are going to change our color we are going to choose a red and i'm going to dab in this area and i'm going to do a similar thing in this area as well we want to go ahead and change and choose something like a blue and do it in this area as well as in this area we're going to go ahead and choose a honey mustard yellow now we want to change the blend mode of this and we're going to set this to linear burn so we want to go ahead and type in our text so i'm going to pick up my type tool i'm going to set my default to white use the b buzz font and i will set it somewhere here now i want to go ahead and add a drop shadow so double click and choose the drop shadow now you can set the size to whatever you want i have my distance at eight and my opacity is at 100 percent i'm gonna go ahead and click ok and i'm going to also type in my next text but i'm going to change my font to the agagi pro and i'm just going to type in thumbnail go ahead and increase your font size i want to add a gradient effect to my text as well as a shadow you want to double click on the thumbnail for your text it will bring up the layer style now we want to go ahead and add a bevel we also want to add an inner shadow as well as a gradient overlay an outer glow as well as a drop shadow so we want to click on our outer glow we want to change the color to a red and i'm going to click ok now we want to go ahead and reduce the size of our spread so we keep it on the minimal you can set it to maybe eight or ten i'm going to go ahead to click on my bevel now as you can see these are all the different settings that i have set it to technique is that smooth style is in a bevel and you can see my size is at 10 my contour is glass contour so these are some of the things you have to take note of in my inner shadow i have my blend mode on overlay and my opacity is at a hundred percent my distance is at three now under my gradient you notice that with my gradient overlay i have two-tone color I have the orange and I also have the yellow. My blend mode is on normal, my style is on linear, and my scale is at 100%. If I click on my glow, I chose a red. Now I can take the opacity back so it's not so strong. Under the drop shadow, it's very basic. So I have a black drop shadow. I'm going to change it and set it to the cyan. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop in this thumbnail. And I'm going to set it in the corner. And as you can see, I'm using the same font uh, effect that I'm using here. So the good thing is once you create one template for your thumbnails, you can reuse the type of text if it works, or you can change the colors as you go along. Now, we want to go ahead and rotate this a little. 
and I'm going to bring in two other thumbnails. Once you have all your thumbnails, you can go ahead and maybe scale it so that it's a little bit big and it's visible. Now, if you still have your layer max showing the maxing of your background, you can right click and say apply layer max and it will take away the complete background. And so you have an image with no background. Now, we wanna add a layer max. And the reason why I'm adding is because I want to pick up my brush tool and I want to go ahead and basically erase this portion of my hand so it's not visible in the thumbnail. So if you want to add a glow effect around your subject, you want to double click on your thumbnail and go and choose the outer glow. Now you can change the color to white and once that is set, you can increase the opacity click on my thumbnail of my subject my layer max and i can erase a little bit more so my hand is not showing i can apply the glow effect around my images on the right so i'm going to right click and say copy layer style i'm going to click on each of my image right click and apply layer style now if you don't like the glow effect you can double click on that image your layer style will come up and you can go back into your glow effect and you can either increase your glow effect so that it pops a little bit more i'm going to right click copy this layer style and then apply that to the other two images you want to go ahead and bring in a symbol it's almost like a call to action that will make people click so once you bring it in you want to go ahead and rotate and i'm going to set it on my thumbnail we want to have it in white so i'm going to click on that layer go under my adjustment add a hue and saturation now i'm going to hold down my options and i'm going to clip it now when you hold down your options you notice that you have a down arrow you want to click in between the two lines now i want to go under properties and take my lightness all the way to 100. I can double click and add a shadow effect. So a little bit of a drop shadow. I can click inside and change the color and set that to black. You can go ahead and click OK. Click back on your subject layer. Add a new layer. Pick up your brush tool and I'm going to choose the color in the shirt. I'm going to increase my brush and I'm just going to dab here and dab there. Now I can go ahead and pull up my white so that is in the middle. So when creating the thumbnail, you want to make sure your subject pops as well as the text and any other elements. To finish this off, we want to go ahead and add a camera raw effect. So click on your top layer, shift option, command E you will create one single file. Now you wanna go up to your filter and you wanna choose camera raw filter. I'm gonna use the camera raw effect to basically bump up the color and richness in the thumbnail. So you wanna increase your temperature a little, you can increase your contrast. Now you notice that the subject and everything else is really popping. Now, you can also increase your blacks if you want. You can increase your vibrance so that your thumbnail really pops. If you want, you can also add in some saturation, but you have to be careful so that you don't overdo it. Now, I'm going to go ahead to click OK. Now, this is the before and this is the after. So guys, this is how you create your own clickable thumbnail for either your YouTube channel or if you're a graphic designer, you can use this as a passive income by creating these thumbnails for other channels. And how do you do that? You can reach out to other channels and create maybe one or two samples based on the videos that they already have and just give that to them for free and ask if they will consider you creating thumbnails for their channel. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please give me a thumbs up. If you did enjoy it, share it so others can also see it. Bye, y'all.